Engineering, I'm Alan. In today's video we're checking that the tailstock is at the correct height to the headstock. Now over the years the tailstock will slowly drop down because as you're moving it backwards and forwards across the bed it's wearing some of the tailstock away and some of the bed away and the tailstock will drop down in relation to the headstock. So I'll check mine about every three or four years and I'll show you how to check it and how to correct it. Now to check the tailstock you need a test bar. Now this test bar is just some silver steel with a centre in each end and you can buy silver steel which comes in set sizes and just set, put a centre in each end. If you haven't got any silver steel, you can use ordinary steel, but you'll need to put, put it in your chuck, turn the end down to get a nice finish, and centre it. And then turn it around the other side, turn it down, and centre it. You don't need to machine the whole bar. So we'll be looking at how to test that the tailstock is in line, both in vertical and horizontal position and then what to do if it's out. So let's go into the workshop, see how we do it. Today I'm going to check that the centre of my headstock is in line with the centre of my tailstock. And that is in two directions, the vertical from the bed and the in or out of the tailstock. Now first to do that I need a test bar. And what I'll do is make a test bar from some 15mm silver steel. This is steel that has a ground finish. The longer the steel is, the better. As this is already a finished diameter, set this up in the chuck, face it off at the end, and drill a centre drill hole in the end. I'll show you how to do this on a smaller length, but I will use my test bar that I normally use it's about 13 inches long 15 millimeter diameter this is silver steel and all I've done on this is face it off put the center in this end and the center in the other end but if you haven't got a full length of silver steel you can use any type of steel you need to turn the diameter so it's running true on the end so what I need to do on this piece of silver steel is face it off, centre drill it but before I do that I need to make sure that this is running true it's a three jaw chuck but this chuck you can alter the centre position to take out any run out in the workpiece well, the first thing I want to do is put a dial indicator on here to see how true that silver steel is running let's check the run out a dial indicator in my tool post touch it on the end of the bar then by adjusting the screw you can reduce the run out of the part so take the lowest point which is about there the screw that's opposite the lowest point is this one on the side here and adjust that to bring the needle up so if I zero it It's just under a thou. The lowest point again, which is this one. Tighten this up again, half the error. So it's now a couple of tenths. That's the lowest point again, a little bit more. You can see now that's less than a tenth, so I'll face the end off. Just bring in a centre drill.
If you're using a piece of steel that's not silver steel with a ground finish, or you don't have a chuck you can centralise, I would just centre drill, turn the end down, so the diameter's true for about half inch along, with the fine finish, because you need that for your dial indicator to run on. On this end you can see the V's on the bed. This one and the other end one, what the saddle runs on. And this inner V and the flat is what the tailstock runs on. Well, what I want to check is that the tailstock is central that way also centered vertically now on this tailstock I can move the tailstock in and out normally you'd set that if you're turning a, a diameter along bar or something you could take a light cut measure each end and adjust the tailstock to give you a parallel bar I'm not so much worried about the horizontal position because I can adjust that on the tailstock I want to see how much wear there is on the tailstock affecting the vertical position of the centre. Now to do that, so we've made our test bar. And then what you do is exactly the same on the other end of the bar, but I have a longer bar I want to use. Just make sure it's running true or turn it true and then face and centre drill each end. So you end up with a bar that you have a centre drill in each end. This one is about 13 inches long. So that's my test bar. What I want to do is take this chuck off and put the centre in. So to take the chuck off, I just put a bar between the ch chuck jaws, lock my spindle and just tap the bar. I don't use a chuck key and lever the chuck key because on some chuck keys that have a very small end you could snap the end of the chuck key off. Piece of wood on the bed so if I do drop the chuck or it comes off unexpectedly it's going to land on the wood and not damage my bed. I'll unscrew the chuck. Next thing I want to do is make sure there's no swarf or dirt in the Morse taper. And to do that I'm using this homemade cleaner. There's a video on how to make that. Just clean out the centre. On this lathe, this is a number three Morse taper in the headstock. And I have a number three Morse taper with the centre on. If you haven't got that, you can use an adapter from number three to number two and a number two center. I prefer to use the bigger one because I don't know how much error is in this and in that. Because if there's any error in this taper sleeve or this center, you're introducing another error into the center of the headstock. So this end's finished, move on to the other end. On the tailstock, clean the Morse taper. And then on this end I'm fitting another centre. So I have a centre on each end, and then I'll use my test bar, the bar that has a centre drill hole in each end. So you place your test bar between centres, put a dial indicator in your tool post and make sure that the centre of the dial indicator is on the centre line. Wind it in to zero, I'll go around one full turn, zero the dial indicator and just mark your bar with a felt tip pen just to show that is the top position. Move it down as far as you can go and you can see there 
that it's showing half a thou out. And that's over a length of about nine or ten inches. So I can bring that to zero by adjusting my tail stock. The screws are each side of the tail stock. Slacken one off, and tighten the other one up until you get it to read zero, and then just go back to the start and check that it's still zero. And move it back to the tail stock. That's within half a tenth. So I'm not so worried about this way because I can adjust that on the tail stock. Now I want to check the top of the bar. If you've only machined the bar at one end on the diameter, you can zero it at the headstock, turn the bar around and check the tail stock. If it's a ground bar, there's no need to turn the bar around, providing it's parallel. You can turn the bar around Bring it back onto the tail stock. Thought your tail stock back up. Make sure your red marks on the top. Bring it along. There you can see the dial indicator is on zero. So once you get the tail stock side and the head stock side on zero in that plane, now you need to move the dial indicator onto the top to check the heights. Now to check the height, I've removed my tool post. Place a magnetic stand on top of the compound slide. Put the dial indicator in the magnetic stand. I'll start at the headstock. Move it across the top of the bar to get to the highest point. And then set your dial indicator to zero. And move your saddle along to the tail stock again. It's the end of the bar. You can see there that's a thou lower, but then you need to go over the bar again, in and out with the dial indicator till you find the highest point. And that's two thou lower. So my tail stock is two thou lower than the head stock. I can alter that by putting some shims under the tail stock. Now to do the tail stock, I wouldn't normally do it at two thou, but I'll do it to show how it's done. Take the tail stock off. And to get the handle out underneath, there's a small grub screw. So right there there's a small grub screw. You undo that grub screw and the handle should come out. And this bottom part will come away. Then slacken off this screw and the one on the other side and the top should come off the base. Put the screwdriver in here, lever that out. I think that's the first time that's been off in 50 years. You can see here, you can put a piece of shim across here and across here. Put the part back together. And while I've got it off I'll cut some shim for it. This is the position of the shim and the shapes of the shim. You need to cut the rectangle out to give clearance for the tailstock handle. You can also see at the back the two grub screws that offset the tailstock. Then reassemble the tailstock and replace it on the lathe. Use the grub screws on each side to re-center the tailstock. And then we go back to the test bar to check out the difference. Before you check the tailstock height, 
just center the tailstock so you're zero and then at the other end it comes back to zero you can move the dial indicator to the top and check any difference in height we can now check if that three thou brass shim has made any difference to the center height that's zero move to the other end and on this end zero now if i remember before that was two thou lower than the headstock and as i said before i wouldn't normally adjust the tailstock height just for two thou oh well that's it for today hope that was interesting hope you found it useful if you liked it why not subscribe and we'll see you next time on enots engineering <music>